the kiln shelves can be stacked here and we'll go through proper stacking that will make sense um, after we get them washed we have our stilts right here or um, I guess they're posts um, so posts are according to size we got one two three four five six we have six different sizes and then we have peeps up here um, the peeps will go in the kiln to help protect um, the uh, heat to keep it in um, sometimes uh, and we'll talk more about that according to the firing I do have a chart right here this is obviously kind of antiquated at this point but this is good reference for whatever type of firing you do for when you guys want to start doing non-traditional firings or non-standard firings that will help you give you an idea and down here as well um like the length of firing that you want that's that yeah so that's the temp right the internal yeah temp, that's right? the internal temp and you'll be able to see the um there's a thermometer here so we're gonna unload this was the test firing so they suggested I do it to cone 04 um, so these are cones um, you'll notice on the temperature chart that they have Fahrenheit Celsius and cone this is what they're talking about these are um, glaze okay. right so the, these measure the glaze glaze melts is time plus temperature so it's not one or the other so like a slow fire uh, glaze or anything like that I'll get some water in there first let the um, uh, and then start scooping in bits of the, the particulate um, reason why is because we don't want to create a lot of dust um, and also if we were to put the powder in first and then pour water into it a lot of the times particulates like to clump up um, and sort of gather together and then you'll have like chunks of the particulate inside of it that you'll have to sort of like get broken up. Um, so just gonna go ahead and put some water in our bucket. I don't want to create too much dust so I'm sort of like sprinkling this into the bucket um, letting it fully sort of like get moisture I don't know if you guys can sort of see what's like me sprinkling it into the bucket but I'm sort of just like almost creating an island and it's Soaking and taking that bottom layer of the island. Does it actually dissolve or is it like a suspension? Like Aluminum hydrate, it's a suspension. Okay. So with the kiln wash, sort of try to get an even coat. So you're gonna sort of roll that on. I think uh, one of the problems that sort of comes up when applying kiln wash is that like you, it, when you don't have an even coat, um, it can dry weird um, and then start to sort of like crack. This actually might be a little water thing, maybe. I'll try to mix it up. Where um. You can really pack it tight. We can stack stuff. There's nothing that's going to melt. Um, so things can actually be touchy. Now, that being said, um, there are a couple tricks for us in our loading. The bottom layer you want tall for circulation of air. You also do not want to stack right up like below the next kiln shelf. You want at least an inch or so of air circulating above the work before th with the next kiln shelf above that. So if there's no like room for air, it's you really are going to have to do a slow firing because that um, moisture has nowhere to go um, and has nothing to take it out. 
So always give yourself a, at least one inch um, between the tallest work and the kiln shelf above it. So the bottom layer is going to be tall. Then you can tightly pack the middle of the kiln, right? You can do like really small posts, like plates, 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 plates. And then you want the top, the tippy top layer to also be tall. Oh. So um, tall stuff goes on the very bottom and the very top. Everything else goes in between. Like I said before, this is soft brick. So when we're loading, we really need to avoid um, hitting the soft brick and damaging it. The soft brick is insulating, and if it gets too damaged and starts cracking, then we start losing heat. We have to use more energy to fire. The elements get worn out quicker. Um, so one thing that you super need to pay attention to is this um, little pokey thing right here. This is the pyrometer. This measures the um, temperature. You'd think you'll forget. You'll forget it's there, you'll accidentally whack it. So just always try to keep that in mind that this is just slightly smaller than the um, circumference of the inner uh, kiln. So you do have to get the shelf below it um, before you um, bring it to even. This shelf will always remain at the bottom. This shelf, once we put it in, does not need to be taken out unless there is an explosion in the kiln and that we need to take it out. Okay. Was that noise like, you, like centering it? Yeah, I okay. moved it a little bit, um, okay. but that should, it looks even around, right, for, for the most part. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, do you guys remember how many posts were at the bottom of this? Four. 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 We put posts on posts, so that's a little hard now because oh, we can't see, see it, right? Okay. So what you do is you take your hand. Okay. And you feel below it until you hit a post. Okay. And there's one right here. First layer level at the bottom is going to be tall. So obviously we're going to use either the tallest post or the second tallest post. So getting ready for loading, um, you, you need to know what work, your tall work, is going to go at the bottom. The easiest way to do that is to take one of the posts and just move it. Um, next to your work and see what fits. And then what you can also do is you can put the post right there and then you can move all the work together yeah. and then you have all of that just ready to go in and you don't have that to think about it. That makes a lot of sense. It, right? So, okay. So, George, would you like to put the post in? <laughs> Post at the bottom. Yeah, because the temperature is so, so high, so we need to do everything deal. possible to prevent anything from sticking to it, each other. Is it pretty close to the edge usually? Usually, um, um, but they may. You want it on the shelf. You don't want it to be touching the to bricks. Um, yeah, don't have it touch the bricks. However, because it is a bisque load. Pieces can be touching. Right. Um, space. Right, okay. But sort of get things in there, try to, I guess, jangle them together. Uh, pieces like this that are fully enclosed, you need to inspect it and make sure that you find that there is indeed a hole. Um, and that it is hollow to allow airflow from the inside out. If there is no hole, it cannot be fired. It will explode. One full shelf, which means that from now on we're using half shelves that are only going to cover um, half of the area. So this needs to go across two um, posts here, but it needs to be shared with the other half shelf. So you have to position it um, so that it goes through these two 
down the middle and that there's enough room on the other shelf to also have a stable um, area to stand on. Master Potters <laughs> at like one of and the receptions. George. And me, yes. <laughs> Eventually, if you guys do this enough, uh, you'll start to see little things. Like, almost knowing when a piece is not going to turn it. out. <laughs> There's been times when I've had the low inviting lots kiln and I'm like, yeah, this piece is probably going to explode. Mm -hmm. Let me place things in a way that if Oh yeah, you guys have talked about that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. like it doesn't affect other people's pieces. And sure enough, yeah. things like that do happen. So, so we can go yeah. Keep loading. Small yeah, stuff. I'm yeah. assuming this person wants their stuff to fire like this. I would assume that too. I love this. Who's is this? Is this? Imani, I think. So nice. Yeah, it has to be small or something small. So you can put put the big things in first, and then you can take all the small stuff and place it around. Okay. Right. So with the Biz Kiln, we can stack work because we don't have glaze. Um, and the way we stack work is uh, we find two similar uh, items and you put the first item down um, as is, certain right side up. Make sure it does not touch the bricks here. And then we take the second piece and we flip it upside down so that it is lip to lip. So we have um, packed our kiln shelf and our posts are right where the pyrometer is. It is important that the pyrometer doesn't touch anything. If it touches anything, it gets a false reading. So what we are going to do is we're going to stack um, some shorter posts on top of these posts to ensure that our next shelf does not touch the pyrometer. These are even go taller. This is fine. Yeah. Uh, who has not loaded a shelf yet? Have you not loaded a shelf yet? Okay. You're up. guys are loading, avoid that pyrometer as much as you can, um, and when you're loading pieces around it, give it space. Um, yeah. What type of clearance? What two type inches, of clearance? Three inches, uh, inch, inch, two inch. Yeah, if you just shift it. Is that better? Or? 
Yeah. Okay. I think so. And I imagine it would probably become more apparent if it's off center if you touch them and there's like way more space on one side than the other. So this is our top layer. Obviously we don't need any posts on top of this. Um, we don't have one right now, but all I'm going to do is get a stick <laughs> um, so you can measure how much height there is on this top one for your tallest work. Oh, okay. So then you can compare the, the stick to the work. Um, this Maybe is a... just use my hand. Yeah, we just have like a ruler living here. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get something like that. So what are you doing now? I am... Oh. Placing her ring. Oh, cool. Yes. Perfect. Right. Okay. So it's okay to get a little um, creative with how you fire these or how you fire things. The posts are going to be fine, obviously. There's not going to be any problem. That's awesome. Yeah. Same. Okay. Those are nice. Thank you. I mean, I'm very proud of them. You should be. You've got to put luster on the wings. <laughs> to the kiln and fired as like aesthetic. I know, I have to take a picture. Oh, okay. You can see how it's kind of changed. And it's here. Especially if it goes horribly wrong. <laughs> Do we want to open it up and call it? No. That was a test firing just because we can't know, we don't know if we can trust the reading and the cones are more this? accurate than the digital thermometer. No, you don't need to. Okay. That'll be uh, when we go to like crack the kiln. Okay. Um, to get the air to bend out. Oh, okay. It's oh, it's to hold it up. Oh, I thought it was a lock. So, okay. Yeah. Um, and how are you, are we going to talk more about when to plug these in? Okay. And on, um, it's probably never, you're probably never going to have to deal with this again for the moment. Okay, so preheat should be six hours. Six hours, I go zero zero save the cone we're doing a bisque firing so oh, oh, five there we go save the speed is slow because that's the safest we for a bisque you don't need any hold time so let's say you want to do a delay um you can enter the delay the alarm is set at 2000 degrees and then all we do is press start. If you push start and you don't hear this clicking, it's not heating up. Okay. So don't leave the kiln until you hear the clicking. The clicking tells you that it's it's on. Okay. Um, other things. It is, you don't want to be in here when the kiln is firing. You can come in and check, but you don't just hang out by the kiln. There's a lot of stuff burning off okay. and coming into the air. Um, low, low temperature is fine. Sometimes they'll come in and if you come in during the temperatures when the organics are burning off, there'll be kind of an aromatic smell. Not the biggest deal with bisque, but with glaze you absolutely don't want to just be like hanging out right next to the kiln in an enclosed space. So. Um, this net, like if it's all closed up, it stays in the kiln, and that's just as much of a problem mm -hmm. as if um, like we're not doing a preheat at all. So these do need to stay open. Um, for expediency, I think we're just going to leave one open the entire firing um, for a bisque. Um, for a glaze, you don't need to worry about that. Everything should oh, okay. be completely, like, dry. Oh, right, so, okay. So, um, for bisque, we will leave the top peep open. If, um, there's, there's where are the peeps? There, yeah. um, oh, over there behind the fan. So it doesn't 
I know we're gonna keep ours in good condition. Uh -huh. But I've noticed that some are broken at Mighty Mud. The peeps? It doesn't matter. Um, as long as they fit in, it's okay. They just they fall out so easily. Yeah. Oh, so and they, they fall in and hit the ground. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they fall. Yeah, they're just like ceramic. They yeah. feel fragile. They, they're yeah. fragile. I don't like the they're, they're and they really don't like really go. That's almost. okay. Yeah, they don't go in very well. No, they don't. This is weird. And they feel fragile. I don't know. I think, I think I don't this think floor might help a little bit. Maybe. But that's why they're broken. Is okay. that they just you, you accidentally bump them and they fall out. Yeah. So we will leave the top heap open to allow moisture to escape. Um the kiln lock. Uh up there we have a book um that will probably be put someplace else. The bottom kiln log. And this is to so we know what's going on. Um so we have the date, we have the firing, in this case it's bisque. Um, the person who loaded is everyone. <laughs> um, and then I have unloaded and you can put the date. If it's a different person, put your name so we know who unloaded. And probably not for a while, but if there's anything funky or weird happening or any notes that we need to take mm -hmm. um, to just do this. And this is um, just so we can keep track of what's going on with the count. Yeah. So keep the fans on. Um, once you're done, so we can keep the inside of the kiln shed cool. And then if you come with me around. We can't help but things like that. We have two little um, latches here that will allow airflow to happen. Okay. So always open this. Yes. Okay. Let's go with yes for now. Okay. I mean, it's. It's, I don't, it's, it's over the top. It's over it, place. but it's like it's a centimeter. Could you add in just another small post yeah. on Oh, just put. Yeah. And then do a third. Okay. Just, just trap the taller ones into the, another. It's not... One of these on top of it. You can also do that. Um, that would make for it to be a little bit more stable. Um, I don't know. I, I'm always scared when I see people try to stack three posts on top of each other. I I will... <laughs> You've done it? I, I'll, I'll, I'll do whatever. Best practices. Best practices. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I wasn't talking about that. I was going to say... use Replace the, it. Yeah. Replace that one with the tall one and then put okay. another thing on top of it because then that becomes those two that you had down there. Okay. Um, yeah. Jasmine, you want to get in here? Yeah, what? You want to get in here? Oh, this is actually a load here. and put put shelves in. I put the first shelf in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So then we can. Did you put the? Oh wait, no, little I didn't. Right. One of these days. Yeah. Which one? These? Uh, what'll give us like a, a good clearance? I mean, that'll give us a definite good clearance over that double couple. Oh yeah, that's like an inch. Is an inch good? Yeah, okay. that's fine. How much stuff do we have? Um, at this point, everything that we needed. Yeah. Is, okay. Yeah, just the rings. I think it's what, yeah, uh, just the rings. And um, then you wanted this yeah. as well, right? A little bud. Ready? So, you're going to luster, luster it? Mm -hmm. mm. When, when, would, when would that uh, happen? happen? I did request a Saturday. luster on Saturday. Saturday. We did talk about... <laughs> I'm, I'm very cool with letting stuff hang out. I have no... I'm the opposite. Oh, so you, you don't want to get it luster? 
you don't want to get it lustered Saturday? No, because I won't be here Saturday. Okay. I'll be at a pool party. Okay. That's more important. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. So. Now, how are these happening? Well, these are resting on this side. Um, because it's weighted such that it looks like that old work. Oh, so the wings are the only parts that are glazed? The wing, well, the, this is glazed as well, which is why I can't rest it the way that I rested it for the bisques, because the bottom is glazed as well, so they have to rest on the side. And that glaze doesn't have any flux on it? No, it's the, um, obsidian, or the black, whichever one was the, the mm -hmm. thicker. Um... We have a we have a city. Is the ring the ring just raw clay? I think so. The ring is yeah raw yeah. except for the wings. The wings in the bottom of the hexagon are glazed. Okay. Where it lies the problem? Yeah. Um, and we have unfortunately all of these lovely wires to use, but they're yeah. we got to get them sideways. I didn't bring a wrench to get them out. I need to find which one. Just have the thank you. The um the other ten to do. Yeah. <laughs> but they're they're lighter, so they should be easier. Mm -hmm. So I guess if can is do we have enough wire for these no, no, no. Because they, they they might be able to just rest on that because they're not as heavy as now we close it? Mm -hmm. Am I missing a step? Mm -hmm. Okay. will be one open. Yeah. Yeah. So for the glaze firing, we put all of the peeps in the peep holes. Okay. They make people, me so nervous that some, they don't like this. Some them. people do fire with like one out for like off gassing purposes, but um I think it probably oh. also increases the uh, amount of money when, it does. when you have to, when it's struggling to get up to temperature. Because right, because it's true. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now, program? Correct. And, uh, oh, there isn't a glaze. Cone fire? Oh, cone fire. And we are going to. Okay. Okay. So go take that to zero. Take, yeah. Take that to zero. Good. And then we're going to cone six. It's the <laughs> slider. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Fun fact: cone O six is not the same as six. Okay. So the O is important. Yes. Okay. It's a stupid system. So that's 06, and we need 6. Oh. Mm. Or, I'm sorry, 5. We need 5. Oh, we're not doing 5. Okay. Keep going down. Oh, oh. Okay, okay, okay. Why doesn't it go higher than 5? That's a good question. Maybe, oh. Bisque five, bisking hotter than cone 4. Can, uh, what is it? Why? Um, 
we might be able to program it hotter, but because we're in cone mm -hmm. firing, it probably only goes to five. Okay. okay. So save and slow speed, fast. Fast. Okay. So if you have like stuff you're worried about, you can do medium. I'd rather really oh, okay. do a slow glaze kiln. It's do we have any delay, or do we start right away? We have a hold time of five minutes. Mm. I think this. Nope. Yeah, oh. it, it starts with minutes. There's no seconds. Oh, okay. Yeah. And no delay, and okay. Okay, so um, yeah, uh, just to review, we have a six hour preheat, six hour preheat, cone 05 for bisque at a slow speed, right? For a glaze kiln, we have no preheat, cone 5 fast with a five minute hold. So four hours and thirty-two minutes. And you know, the older the kiln gets, the older the elements get, the longer it will take because mm. the elements get tired and it takes more energy to heat it up.